Good. Right. Good, good. All the folks out there in uh, internet land. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a real pleasure to be back with you and to spend some time uh, with uh, our friends here among the young Republicans, and, and certainly uh, at this very critical juncture that we're at, that we find ourselves right now, where coming off of an enormous uh, victory, uh, which uh, took a lot of work and a, a lot of uh, a lot of spit and uh, elbow grease to get out there and actually pull together the victories that we saw. No one could count the 39. Uh, a year ago. Um, no one could, could estimate the size of this victory. Uh, so a lot of us acted and moved on faith. Uh, a lot of us acted and moved on uh, having the opportunity to go out and compete at the national level, at the local level, uh, to win elections. My role as national chairman during that time was very clearly to set the course and the direction to raise the money to win the election. Uh, but certainly for me, the most important and most valuable asset was the grassroots for the people. Our state parties, our chairman won the, the elections, our national committee men and women won the elections. The RNC, we took the resources that came in the door and we put them back on the streets uh, of this country so that we could put the party back on the streets where I believe the party belongs. This is a great town. This is my hometown. I was born and raised here. It's suffocating at times. It's stultifying at times. It, it lives within its own little orb and doesn't necessarily connect to everything else that's real and tangible out there when people go through good times and go through tough times. That's where our party needs to be. That's where our party is going to be over the next two years uh, if I remain RNC chairman. The fact of the matter is we raised $192 million. We put victory centers in every state of the country for the first time ever, 360 of them. We had over 200,000 volunteers, and you know what was special about that? It was a lot of those volunteers were our young Republicans, our college Republicans, our teenage Republicans, who took time out to participate in this process. What I want to do now is to encourage you, as we stand here at this crossroads, not in the chairman's election, but a crossroads of what this party does next. Now that the wins are over, now that the fun is behind us, the hard and heavy work of continuing to build a grassroots organization that will lead to a governing majority. We have a majority now. We do not have a governing majority. That's our goal over the next two years is to work towards a governing majority. And I see at the apex, the center, the front of that line, you got our young Republicans, young men and women who are beginning to emerge politically into their own. The last time I was with this group, I said to you very succinctly and very directly, this is not uh, your mama's and your daddy's Republican Party anymore. It's yours. It's yours. Run for chairman of your state party. Run for national committee man and national committee woman. Be a part of that convention in 2012. Run for state office. Don't sit on the sidelines and wait for permission from me or anyone else for you to engage in your party. Take control of this opportunity at this cornerstone, at this moment where we're about to go in a new direction. And that new direction is very simply, very clear, clearly, defeating the Obama agenda over the next two years and winning the White House for Republican presidential nominee in 2012. All of you will have an important role to play there. If you look back over the last two years, when we got on the bus uh, in, in September, late August, September, to run across the country for six weeks to talk to America about our party, our values, our principles, to talk to America about our candidates. You were there. You were at those bus stops. You were in those victory centers. You were part <coughs> of this process. Don't let anyone take away from you the role you played in bringing about and sustaining victory. Don't let anyone diminish what you brought to this table nationally, statewide, and locally, because it was important. It was very important. Now you have to ask yourself, what do I do next? And how do I do it next? How can I stay involved? Who do I need to talk to to convince to be a part of this wonderful, wacky experiment here at the Republican National Committee, at the Republican Party of my state? Who can I get involved? How can I expand that network? How can my voice be a part of the many voices out there 
talking about freedom and responsibility, individual rights and opportunities. Are you going to be a passive player? Or are you going to be a player? Are you going to be someone who's going to make a difference? Well, as national chairman, I need to see you as active. I need to see you as a player, as someone who has influence and as someone who's willing to step out and commit to a direction, to a course, to an opportunity, and then make it happen. My responsibility is to make sure you have the resources to get it done. My responsibility is to make sure that to the extent that we can tap you into networks, we tap you into networks. And we have you involved in this process very much as we've done over the last two years. If you look at the kind of candidates that have won, from Tim Scott, Christy No, Susanna Martinez, when you look at the kinds of men and women who are now in our state legislatures, our city councils, they're your generation, they're your colleagues, they're your friends, folks you may have even worked for that you helped get across the line. You now have a stake in this, folks. You have a big stake in this. Not just because we won, but even in those situations where we've lost, your stake has been claimed that we can now move forward in this community and do something different the next time. Maybe we can win that seat the next time. Maybe I'll be the candidate running the next time. That's your potential. And I'm sick and tired of folks in this party telling you you don't have it. And I'm sick and tired of the frustration that I hear and see from folks like yourselves who say, I want to be involved, but I'm told I can't. I want to be involved, I don't know how. I'm asking you to step up with me in a second term. I'm asking you to step up with your state party leadership and make sure they know of your interest and your desire <clears throat> to be a part of something bigger than yourself to bring the talent, the skill, the opportunity that you have to our table in a real direct way. And we can talk about this all day long, but over the next two years will be a time for action. Your national leadership is ready. Your state leadership is ready. Are you ready? What is the level of commitment you're willing to make? How uncomfortable are you willing to become in this? You know, Republicans, we stay inside our comfort zone for way too long sometimes. And we forget how to connect the dots beyond that comfort zone. Well, I need you to be uncomfortable. Trust me, the last two years of this job has been a little bit uncomfortable. But that's all right, because we won 64 House seats, 21 state legislatures split. New members to the United States Congress, I mean, Senate, new governors. 